my fourth grade teacher, her, she was asking me one day if uh, she knew I was really into music. And she said, do you ever want to play an instrument? And I said, yeah, I want to play drums. And uh, she said, my brother plays drums. And she gave me a tape of her brother's band. And her brother was Johnny Feedback from Crow. And uh, <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, three years, literally three years later, when I was 12, I uh, accidentally sort of like bought a Crumb Suckers record because I really liked the artwork on it. And uh, and so I was in school drawing um, the little crumb sucker guy on one of my notebooks. Mm -hmm. And a kid sees me and says, you like the crumb suckers? And I was like, yeah, love them. You know who they are. And he's like, my cousin plays guitar. So again, this is all New York shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the first show I ever went to was an all ages crumb, crumb suckers show. And after that, it became like this deep dive for me. Like I didn't go to another show for probably six or seven months after that. But during that six or seven months, and again, this tells you something about my personality. Um, it was basically research time. I knew I had discovered something. It was very interesting to me. I was really, in I, I, I was able to identify it as more than just a music. I was able to identify it as a culture and I want to know everything about it. So that's when I discovered fanzines. I started buying records. I was just reading everything I could, trying to find people who could talk to me about it, writing people blindly from the M Maximum Rock and Roll Pen Pals pages. Um, and by that summer of 1987, I would say that was when I fully, uh, I believed that this was something important and that this was something that I was most likely going to be a part of for a very long time. 